and welcome to part two. I'm sorry for that very jittery, floaty ending. It's just I was staring at the time thinking, should I carry this video up to 15 minutes or not? Anyway, we, we shall say. Yeah. Um, okay, so Marcus dude on front. Okay, so yeah, as I've already said, he needs to investigate this um, plot to um, kill Julius Caesar. And, um, another funky thing about this book is, aside from the awesome cover, is when I picked this book up and, when I picked this book up and I bought it, I was just flicking through it, on the front there was no sticker saying, signed by the author, yet inside I discovered a very nice surprise. Simon Scarrow, I love that signature. It ranks up with Bernard Cornwell's. <laughs> I have this thing about judging author's signatures like I think whether they're absolutely horrible or nice and I really like Simon Scarrow's. It's actually readable. This book is making creaky noises. Which isn't good. Okay and then the other book I got also by a guy called Alex although his surname is Bell is um Lex Trent versus the Gods. Now this I Ran, I never heard of it, and I ran and picked it up because I thought I need my third book. I want a free, free third book. So this um, book sounds really awesome. It was like, cheats never prosper. At least that's what everyone else would have you believe. But Lex Trent knows better. Lex knows that with a bit of luck, the quickest route to success is, uh, is to lie, swindle, and cheat all the way to the top. Unfortunately, Lex has taken his scams a step too far. Rather than see, rather than see his neck in a noose, he's forced to go on a run in a world of irritable gods, fearsome magicians, and strange beasts. But luck is still on his side. Just. The gods' favourite pastime is the games. And Lex has just become one of the human playing pieces. With fame, glory, and untold wealth at stake, Lex isn't going to lose, especially as that so often involves dying. And in fact, he fully intends to beat the gods at their own game. This just sounded awesome. I'm really annoyed that it doesn't say, you know, part of a series because I love mythology. So I was like, oh, why couldn't this be part of a series? Anyway, you may have noticed the thing is scuffed. But the whole reason I picked up this book, despite its damage, and there's small damage, is because of the following thing. The year is 2012, isn't it? This was published in 2010, and it is, you see that, first edition. I thought, what's the chances of coming across the first edition book two years after it's been published? So I picked up that book, and I was like, ooh, yes. Okay, so I've got like about um, 12 minutes left, less than 12. I might actually do a book review for the book I did not review thingy. The book review video that I did not upload because it was so awful. This time it'll be better. Not you can work me with a frying pan. Okay, so the book I'm going to be reviewing is Crypt the Gallows Curse. Okay, so Crypt has got very small print and it is um, I think that's a preview thing that's a preview thing 338 pages long and it was £7 in the UK it's just been published in the UK funnily enough the guy who wrote this Andrew Hammond lives in Suffolk, which is where I live, which is quite weird. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I got this for 54p off Amazon, and it's a first edition, so I'm very happy with that. Okay, so CRYPT. CRYPT stands for the Covert Response Youth Paranormal Team. Blurb says this. When a brutal crime is committed, but there's no human explanation, who can the police turn to? It's CRYPT, of course. This secret MI5 division recruits teenagers with extra sensory perception. There, that was tongue, twist, tongue twister. Crypt agent Jude 
or Judd, it's spelled J-U-D, Leicester and the team crack these cases using their innate talents and state-of-the-art technology. Terror has seized London. People are dying in vicious attacks, but those who survive the but those who survive agree. The killers, bearing scars for hangman's news, materialised out of thin air. Crypt has been dispatched. The hunt is on. Okay, so um, it's basically I never watched this series, but I would see it as sort of like highly advanced teenage Ghostbusters. They actually they don't they can't instantly zap ghosts into thin air. But they do have a, a gun, as it were, for zapping ghosts, and it works over a few minutes. So, the book itself. Um, Judd as a character, he actually has a little bit of a nasty past. Um, he's called, he is called Judd Lester, but his real name is Jamie Good, and um, he's the son of Jason Good, who is basically this billionaire, this American billionaire, who funds crypt and what happened was Jamie and his mother were in this castle where they live and J and Jamie's mother was suddenly grabbed and pulled off this tower's battlements and killed and um, Jamie was done for murder but Jamie was but Jamie said the ghosts did it and basically his father Jason set up this thing called the paranormal investigation team pit um, so then he could have proof and stuff to prove that ghosts existed so then he could clear Jamie's name until then Jamie was let out on bail I think I'm not sure I'm not sure how he was let out I think it was just uh, I'm getting confused Oh yes, here we go. Um, J Jamie was locked up, and then basically too many people were turning up on the um, investigation sites, and this was mucking up the readings of the pits investigation things. So what happened was pit shut down, and an MI5 came forward and said, "We would like to help. You know, we, we will keep you secret." And Jason said, "All right, we'll, we'll refound it. We'll call it crypt." on one thing and he wants Jamie back so Jamie got um he was released but he's monitored closely and he's given a new name and from then on um something I can't remember what I was going to say sorry okay so um, what was awesome about this book was every chapter I got that and the date and the day the time and the location so you knew instantly where you were and when and stuff so the character of Judd has got a very bad temper naturally because he's quite protective of himself uh, because he doesn't want anybody knowing who he is um, and what I really liked about this book was the ghosts. Um, if you don't like gore and you're squeamish, don't read this. The deaths in here are just violent. They are seriously gory, which is brilliant for any gore lovers, but not good for anybody who's squeamish. Because one of the first attacks that happens is a ghost sticks his hand through a student's head and out the back of the throat and kills him and then he rips another guy's tongue out and all that lovely stuff and these ghosts can also make bugs appear which eat people very very cool um apart from that i'm really not sure what else i can say other than it was a really awesome book and um genuinely having me kept on reading wanting to read it um, the one downside I guess I'd say would be that the main female characters are of course described as beautiful. Why can't for once the main female characters be described as plain or even slightly ugly? I mean, 
that would be different. That would be actually quite cool. But oh no. Um. Aside from that, there's not a lot of else I can say about this book. Um. Other than, if you're looking for an awesome ghost story, lots of attacks, and there are a lot, including attacks during the daytime in a garden. <laughs> um, pick up Crips and read it like crazy. I don't know whether it's one here on Amazon yet, but hey. So yes, um, I'm surprised how many people don't know that you can get books for one p off Amazon, but yes, you can, and some of them are in really good condition. Can you can get some new books off Amazon for one p so yeah um so I will uh see you a lot next time whoever watches this channel I don't know when but I will do a video maybe on another book maybe I'll review the reformed vampire society or something Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so, um... Or, or Lex Trent versus the Gods or something. <laughs> okay, so, um, I... I really, am um, really sorry about the huge delay in a book video. But I've had tons of work. I've had coursework, exams. Um, it's generally been quite hectic. And I finally had a bit of spare time to record a video. So... Very happy and um, I shall see you guys next time. Okay, so bye.